Hey there, everyone, and welcome to the Writer's Corner. This week's episode is going to be a special little introduction to Void. Uh, I'm deciding because I have six main characters in Void. Uh, this is Void, my novella. That is a dramatic romance, uh, contemporary romance kind of thing. Um, six main characters. Uh, it's like a group of six friends all dealing with their own issues and problems. So I'm going to do character analysis. Pretty much I'm going to kind of give you a little insight into the minds of each of these characters. That way you know going in what their kind of outlook on life is. And that way you can maybe uh, get a better insight into the story. So for my first episode, or not really an episode, it's more of a um, retrospect, re retrospective look at the uh, character that I'm about to talk about, and that is Javier Velasquez. Javier Velasquez, he is one of the driving forces of my novel, or my novella. Um, kind of the whole idea uh, of Void is to talk about some sort of tragedy or heart hardship that comes in life. Javier Velasquez is the perfect embodiment of that vision that I had. His physicality, uh, kind of based him loosely on me. He is Hispanic, which I am half Hispanic. Um, he is um, kind of on the bigger side, but he's not obese. He's just a little heavier than, you know, he's not going to be starring in any blockbuster action movies anytime soon. Um, he's kind-hearted. Um, he is empathetic in that he feels a lot for people. Um, He's always looking to help others before himself, um, which is a good thing for the most part. Uh, but as you'll see in this book, this is kind of a look at who helps the one who helps us. Um, and that's where the creative side comes in because um, I haven't gone through what he's this character is going through. Uh, that's why I said this is more of a physical resemblance than a personal one. Um, Whereas I am empathetic like he is, and I have his personality traits, in this book, he has lost someone he loves. I'm not going to go into detail about who it is, how he lost them, etc. But when we meet Javier, he is at rock bottom. He is at the lowest point in his life. After spending his whole life helping others, um, this group of friends come together to help him because he is just at a loss without this person in their life, when in his life. Um, he drinks, not excessively, he's not, I didn't make him an alcoholic, it's just that he seeks release somewhere. He, um, you know, doesn't know how to live the life he was leading when this person was with him. And uh, he doesn't go out anymore. He uh, is a writer, uh, and uh, so thankfully he works from home. Uh, but his house is in disarray. He's completely alone. Uh, doesn't really see his friends much anymore because of just the depression that has sunk its claws into him. Uh, and that's kind of where we come in at you know Javier's life when uh, Void begins. Uh, throughout the book, you're going to get more insight into what happened to him, why he's feeling the way he's feeling. Um, you get to see a lot of his personality that I like to think in some ways resembles me. In others, he is much stronger than me. And in other ways, he's, uh, you know, weaker too. Because in a lot of respects, you know, bottom line is we're not all perfect. We all have strengths and we all have weaknesses. And, uh, you know, that's the same case for Javier. He feels deeply. He loves deeply. But sometimes his feelings for other people uh, shadow uh, his own love for himself. Uh, he always puts himself on the back burner and in the process loses a part of himself, loses uh, the drive that makes him the loving, caring person that he is. So, you're going to see a lot of that. You're going to see a lot of the the good that comes with being a caring, loving person. 
and you're going to see a lot of the negative effects it has. When you care about everyone else, and you care even less about yourself, uh, things fall to the wayside. Um, friendships are tested, love becomes a much harder thing to attain, and uh, you start to slowly lose hope. And that's where we come in with Javier. Hope is being lost, and it's up to his friends to try and guide him back to that place where he can bring hope to others and to himself. Um, so, that's Javier Velasquez, guys. He is not the absolute main character, but he is what I like to call part of the heart of Void. Uh, everyone has a role to play in this novella, and Javier, for the majority of the part, is the heart. Uh, there is another character that kind of co-serves that heart you know, position, but Javier Velasquez is definitely the heart and soul of uh, this group of friends, and I can't wait for you guys to meet the rest of the gang. Uh, we have a few months left until Void comes out. Uh, I'm really, really passionate about this story. Uh, I see myself writing follow-up stories, follow-ups to this book, uh, and I also see this being something that could be translated easily onto uh, whether you want to do a film or a short film, a web series, etc. I see this being something that can, uh, you know, transcend my written novella, uh, both in print and ebook format. I see this as something that can jump off the page. And I hope you guys will join me in this passionate project that I have. Uh, again, the book is, or the novella, is called Void, and it is available for pre-order now. The book comes out for both print and e-book e formats on October 1st, 2015. I'm getting set up for some sort of launch party, whether it's online or in person. Yet to be seen, it's probably going to be li uh, online, but uh, I'll give you guys details in my daily vlogs as I come up with those details. Um... If you guys would like to see more character analysis, leave them down. Leave comments down below in the comment section, of course. Uh, duh. Um, but uh, if you would also like to read the full book uh, before it's available, you can leave me comments down below. If you'd like to leave me an honest review uh, or do a preview on your YouTube channel, etc. If you would like to access to this book, send me an email, uh, or you can. Uh, Check out my social media links down below in the description box and hit me up on them. Or, of course, you can leave comments down below and we can talk to each other about possibly setting something up. And, of course, I'd love for you guys to go ahead and pre-order the book. It's available for pre-order only on ebook format right now on Amazon Kindle. The link is down below in the description box, uh, along with our sponsors, including uh, The Book Depository, B&H Photo Video, Audible.com, BarkBox. You guys are awesome. But pre-order the book. It would mean the world to me if you could. Uh, again, link down below. And that's it for this week's episode of the Writer's Corner. For everyone watching on YouTube, I appreciate it. Give this video a big thumbs up. Like this video, comment on it, favorite it, and share it. If you have not yet, please hit that subscribe button. It would mean the world to me if you could. And check out The Eye in the Sky for today's recommended videos. And for my listeners on SoundCloud and hopefully by now iTunes, fingers crossed, uh, please subscribe to the podcast and enjoy listening to previous episodes of the podcast. It means the world to me. Uh, every time I see you guys listening, it's awesome to yeah, an awesome feeling to see that you guys are responding. So, thank you guys for watching and or listening. And I'll see you next week for a brand new edition of the Writer's Corner podcast. See you guys next week. Long days and pleasant nights, my friends.